Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. Today I decided to do a little bit of coloring with some alcohol-based markers, and I mostly grabbed my Spectrum Noir markers. Now, just to preface really quickly before I start my project here, um, these markers are more for the economical crafter. They're great for crafting. Um, these aren't the markers that you would pick if you were doing something a little bit more artistic, um, but, they're, but they're great if you're just crafting. Uh, they're about a third of the price of the Copic markers, for example, so you can usually get about a six pack of these for between $11.95 and $14. They come in bigger packs like the 24 packs and even larger. Um, let's see, they have single refills. What's kind of nice is they are kind of square so they don't roll on your table. They recommend that you carefully uh, grip them when you open them <clears throat> so that you don't crack the lids, which is kind of a bummer, but as I said, you get what you paid for. They have a round nib on one side and you'll notice on the side, whoops, I didn't get that on right. You'll notice on the side with the round nib, there's a gray line here, which helps you know that that's the fine point. And then on the other side is where the chisel edge is. And this is also the side that you would remove when you want to refill these, which is great. You can also purchase the single refills now, when I believe at one point you could only buy them in packs. Um, anyhow, it's a pretty good marker. It's great for crafting. So that's mostly what I'm using today. I'm also going to use a couple of La Plume markers. And I, I love the color choices in these markers. They're, whoops as I throw the lid. Uh, the cap, the, the nibs on these ones are a little bit softer, so they're kind of in between the Spectrum Noir and the Copic markers. I'm gonna use those for my browns today. And then just for comparison's sake here, I grabbed a Copic sketch marker. And um, with the Copic sketch markers, they also have a chisel tip and a soft brush tip on the other side. And I actually love the Copics. I'm a bit of a fan <laughs> of the Copics. It is my preferred marker, but I do realize that you know, we have to go with what we can afford. And so a lot of my markers do fall in the Spectrum Noir category, and then I'm kind of slowly building up my Copics. But I'm not trying to tell you which one to buy. In fact, I'd recommend you try a couple of them. You can buy the small packs now so you can kind of get a feel for what you like. And you may find that you want to use the less expensive markers when you're crafting, if you're going to be doing a lot of crafting, just to kind of save you some money. So um, let's go ahead and get started. And again, um, this is just, this is not a review. This is just, we're going to play and have some fun. And I would really appreciate it if you would not dislike my video just because I'm using Spectrum Noir markers and you love the Copics <laughs> or vice versa. But we'll just have some fun today and you just color with which whatever, whatever um, alcohol-based markers that you have. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using three different stamp packs today. Um, the first one is this Penny Black stamp called Sweet Wishes. This is a really cute birthday set and I'm going to use this balloon up here. And then I'm also going to use this Lawn Fawn, uh, kind of a, I think it's called Bannerific. And this is a fun one. It also comes with um, framelits, but unfortunately it does not have a framelit for the banner that I'm going to use, so I'm going to have to hand cut that one. And then I'm also going to use this Sizzix um, stamp and die cut set. And this one is called, uh, I think it's Happy, oh I forget. Oh, it's um, Happy Birthday Cupcake set. So it has the stamps, the ones I've removed I'm using, and then it also comes with framelits, which is also great. I love when you can get a set together like this. So anyhow, let's go ahead and get started and get our stamp stamped onto our pad. Um, I usually use Memento ink. Actually, I don't usually, I always use Memento ink when I'm using alcohol-based markers because I know it will dry quickly and also that it won't smear. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink up my stamp here. And get this down on my paper. And then we'll go ahead and grab our next stamp. This cute little balloon. Oops. <laughs> Did you see what I just did? I grabbed the lid. Okay. So we'll ink up our balloon. And my balloon looks a little funny. I'm going to stamp him on some test paper and make sure he's okay. Uh, I um, used a different kind of ink on this balloon, so we only actually need the top part. Hopefully it won't give me too much trouble here. I don't need very much of it. Ah, oh, we're going to do it again. I think there might be a residue on my stamp. But like I said, I only need the top part to work for me. There we go. That'll work. So we can put a balloon on our project. And then next I'm going to grab that cute little cupcake from the Happy Birthday Cupcake set. I'll go ahead and this one to ink it up a little bit clearer. I'm just going to kind of twist my ink pad and that'll help get lots of black ink in that solid area. And then we can go ahead and stamp our cupcake on. There we go. And then, on another piece of paper, 
I'm also going to quickly stamp two of this oval. And I'll tell you why as we go. Here's our first one. I'm going to do one more next to it. Hopefully I'm staying in the shot. Let's come over a little bit more. Okay, now we've got two of those stamped out. Let's pull back the piece we're going to color on. And go ahead and get started. So for my banner, I'm going to do reds first. So I'm going to use my Spectrum Noir CR7. My CR9. And my, okay, so 7, 9, and 11. We'll get those, <laughs> get those in order here. And we'll go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to take my lightest color first, which is my CR7, and I'm just going to saturate. In fact, let's pull in just a little bit tighter here. So you can see what I'm doing here. And I'll just go ahead and color this whole one in. Basically, we're just wetting our paper, and that's what's going to help us blend. I'm going to grab my darkest color, which is my C11 along the outside. I'm thinking of my highlight being in the center. Then I'm going to grab my medium marker, which is my CR9, and just kind of blend that in. And then my, my CR7 to finish up here. Okay, so there's my red. Go ahead and put our caps back on. And move on to our next color, which is going to be orange. So I've got CR1, CR2, oh, I'm sorry, OR1, OR2, and OR3. Whoops, wrong end. <clears throat> so with my OR1, we'll color in the whole image. You're going to hopefully see a pattern here. And see that this is really easy to do if you haven't had a chance to work with alcohol-based markers. Taking my darkest one, which is the OR3, coming along the top. Along the sides. Switching to my medium marker, which is OR2, and blending that in, and then filling in the center with my OR1. And you can see how that has that great highlight down the middle. So we're done with the orange. Whoops. Got to get these snapped on right. That's the one frustrating thing about these markers. And then we're going to switch to yellow. So I've got CT1, CT3, and CT4. So I'm grabbing my CT1 to color all over. And then we'll switch to my darkest, my CT4. My medium, my CT3. Blend. And then my lightest, my CT1, or my highlight. There we go. And then we'll switch to our greens. And for greens, I've got JG1, JG2, and JG6. So grabbing my JG1, we'll fill in our whole little banner again. Switch to our JG6, which is our darkest. Switch to our medium, our JG2. Get some blending going on here. Now, if you're blending with a color and you see that it is not blending perfectly, you can grab your um, lightest color, your JG1, and I have my JG2. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to switch, switch that here. My JG6, and I have my JG2 in my hand, and I'm going to just grab a little ink from this and use it to help me blend. 
and this will help pull everything in together. There we go. You can see that line starting to disappear. And then we can grab our lightest color again and start to blend that in. There we go, and the green is all done. Get our caps back on and move to our next color, which will be blue. So then I have TB3, TB5, and TB6. Grabbing my lightest color, my TB3. We'll fill in our whole banner, switch to our darkest, our TB6. My edges here. You may have the same situation. It seems to fall with the darker colored markers that we, switching to my medium, TB5, that they don't blend as well, and you have to kind of adjust. Looks like this one's doing okay. Switching to our lightest for our highlight. And now to blend my highlight in a little better, I'm going to grab my medium, my T5, grab just a little bit of it to help soften that edge just a little, and then blend it back in. And there we go. So that is all of our blue. For the banner anyways. <laughs> and now we're going to slide over and do our balloon really quickly here, which is actually down here at the bottom. It was supposed to be up here. <laughs> and I'm going to do our balloon in red. So I'm going to fill the whole thing in with CR7 and I'm just going to quickly outline Don't worry about going out of the lines on this one as it's just going to be cut right out. I'm going to switch to my chisel here to help fill it in just a little bit faster. And then we can switch to our darkest shade, our C11. Come around the outside edge. And on my right side, my highlight's going to be coming on this direction, so I'm going to do this side just a little bit more. Switch to my medium. Start to blend that darker red in. I'm going to grab just a little bit of my medium color, I mean my darker color, to kind of help blend in. And then we'll switch to our lightest. There's our balloon. I'm also going to, um, I want that highlight to jump out just a little bit more, so I'm going to grab my <clears throat> pigment ink. It's a, I think it's a jelly roll pen, uniball, I'm sorry, a uniball white pen, and I'm just going to go over that highlight just a little bit. And I'm doing that now so that it can dry just a little bit. There we go. That'll be nice and bright and vibrant. And now let's move over to our cupcake. So for the cupcake, I'm going to grab my CR7 and fill that cherry in. See if I can do this and you can still see. <laughs> With my lightest color, darkest color, I'm going to go underneath my cherry and just on the right side. I'll grab my medium. This is a really small space, so it's harder to blend. And then my lightest color and pull all that back in. And then you'll notice I got just a touch of red into the blue area. You probably won't see it because I'm going to be using such a dark color, but I'm going to grab my colorless blender. This is actually my Copic one. The Spectrum Noir blender takes a little bit more time because you have to um, uh, push into the paper, let it dry, push into the paper again, let it dry, and then eventually the ink comes all the way through onto the paper that you have underneath. So it's a little bit more tricky to use, so I'm not going to worry about explaining how to do that today. So then I'm going to switch to my blues for my cupcake, and we're doing our TB3, TB5, and TB6 again. So with my lightest shade, I'm going to go ahead and fill in all of the frosting.
Okay, and then we'll grab our darkest shade, the TB6, and I'm going to come underneath my cherry and along the right side and along the bottom because, again, I want my highlight to be coming from this top corner. And so that'll work out with my banner. My banner is, is this way right now, but it's going to be turned sideways, so then my highlights will go down the center. And I also have a reason for doing that um, that I'll explain in just a second. So we did our TB5, I mean our TB, <laughs> our TB6. So now let's switch to our TB5 and start to kind of blend that color in. And then we can switch to our lightest, our TB3. And if you see that again that it's having difficulty blending, you can grab your, your medium color, your TB5, and grab a little bit of color and use that to kind of help blend that medium color in a little bit better. Let's smooth in the rest. There we go, there's our cupcake frosting. Actually, that feels a little bit off over here. There we go. And then for the cupcake wrapper, this is where I went ahead and used the La Plumes. So I have um, 866, 867, and 869. Go ahead and remove our caps. Make things go a little bit faster for us. So I'm grabbing my, um, <laughs> my 866. Oops. Hopefully I'm not bumping too much here. We'll go ahead and start filling in. Trying to be careful because this tip is a little bit more flexible and soft. I'm going to flip it upside down to get those hearts. Okay, so there's our lightest color. And we're going to switch to our darkest color, which was the E869. Think about where your shadows are going to be. It's going to be underneath this little ruffle, and it's going to be on this right side because my shadow again is coming from my upper left <clears throat> and then we'll switch to our medium marker our 867 and start to kind of blend this in I'm going to pull over just a little bit more with this medium shade and then I'll switch to my lightest and start to blend all this in Okay, there we go. There's our cupcake wrap wrapper, and hopefully you can see some highlights in the middle there around the hearts. And then we're going to go ahead and just grab our C9 and fill those little hearts in. Okay, so um, then for the um, banner here, I wanted to, I'm doing a happy birthday card, so I wanted to do the letters happy in here. So I have these really cute little wooden... Um, sets that have, <laughs> that have um, little wooden blocks inside that I think are super cute and this is made by Two Berry Creative and so I thought I'd go ahead and stamp the words happy in here but I'm not going to do that I want to go ahead and get this card put together so that we don't spend too much time today since it's um, about time to be done so I went ahead and um, grabbed a piece of white cardstock that measures when it's folded it measures five and a half by four and a fourth so it's a standard A2 card size then I have a little black stripe layer that's going to go on top that's five and a fourth by four. And we'll go ahead and stick that down. Sorry about the length of this video today, but the coloring's fun to watch, and hopefully you'll enjoy seeing a quick card put together with the elements that we just colored. I'm going to actually pull out just a little bit here. We'll go ahead and get our layer on. 
And then let's grab some of these elements. So um, you'll notice, remember that I stamped two over here. Then I went ahead and just took um, green, the different shades, and orange, the different shades, and blue, the different shades, and just colored them with the chisel edge. And then I went ahead and just cut it out, cut out just the scallop, so it looked like this originally. So I cut out just the scallop, and I'm going to glue those together. I'm just going to grab some Scotch Quick Adhesive to do that. And we'll go ahead and paper piece this piece together. Sorry, I'm trying to remember. I kind of I think I want the blue to be on the bottom, so slip this into place. Sorry, I'm at an odd angle so that I could color for you. So hopefully I got that lined up good. I'm gonna flip that around. I actually want it to go this direction. <clears throat> and then I had um, my little happy banner that I stamped the little letters on and I put some foam adhesives on the back. And then here's our little cupcake. And I went ahead and added some little sticky gems to it to give it a little sparkle. And then here's our balloon. And I went ahead and um, added some glossy accents to my balloon. So let's go ahead and put this together. So, oh, I also um, used my marker again on some white, uh, uh, like a three quarters of an inch thick strip. And then I embossed birthday on there. And then I used um, a one inch strip of paper and put it behind and then cut the as I, before I put each layer on, I cut a little notch in there to give a little banner end. So now we have all of our elements, but before I can put the balloon down, I'm going to kind of eyeball where I want it to go, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab my stays on, stays on white and stamp my balloon on so that I can um, have kind of an outline for my um, string. Sorry, my brain. <laughs> And we'll stick that, let's see, I wanted it right about here. This way I can just um, use a white gel pen and go over the string, because it's difficult to sometimes to get that cute little string freehanding it, which you certainly could freehand, but like I said, I'm just going to grab a gel pen and just really quickly go over it. And then I have the cute little string. Okay. And we'll stick our little balloon on. Okay. And then next, this is kind of where I want this to go. Let's get our banner on. Again, I'm grabbing my quick try. Sorry about the length of the video. Happy if you're still here. <laughs> it's pretty hard to do coloring and do a card without um, doing lots of editing and cutting things out, but sometimes it's fun to watch all of the coloring happen, so if you're like that, <laughs> then you'll enjoy that I've not sped everything up. Okay, and then we'll stick down our little oval frame here. Thinking right about there. And then our little happy is going to go kind of to the side here. So let's peel those little backings off. Again, I apologize for the length. Okay, and there's my little happy. And then let's add our little cupcake. And there we go, a very fun, easy, <laughs> um, alcohol-based colored card. Anyhow, hope you're having a great day and hope you stop by again. Thanks for watching. Bye.